Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Profit Minds podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Stephen Kirch, creator of the Profit Minds Growth System, a unique blend of profit growth, productivity acceleration, and building robust business process for scale. In every episode, I interview entrepreneurs and small business owners from around the world with a unique story to tell. You can find the show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and more. Welcome, Chris. It's really incredible to be here. Can I ask a question before we get going? Sure. I wanted to, I don't know if I should call you doctor. I feel like I want to call you doctor. Are you okay if I call you doctor for the duration of this? Can I just say? Oh, oh sure. Yeah. yeah. You, you spent like, you spent a lot of time getting that to be able to put that before your name. I did. Yeah. You, so you deserve the, you deserve that in terms of like a recognition, right? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay. Doctor, here we are. You can't call me doctor. I did not spend that time. No. That that's that's okay. Um, right. I, I always I always said my wife was smarter than me because she finished she start stopped with her masters. She, um, <laughs> do you call her master? You no. should. <laughs> she is, but bring her, uh, bring her on the call. I'll bring the master on the call. All right, doctor. I'm sorry, I got us off track right away, but thank you. It's really great to be here, Chris. Um, tell me a little bit about what you do. Um, what is it? What is it that made you want to do a or, organic client attraction? Right, pull, up a pull up a chair, doctor. Pull up a chair and and uh, and get ready for the for the long story. It's actually a really short story. And I, unlike so many people in my industry, I don't have like this rags to riches. I was in my attic trying, you know, trying to hide from somebody knocking on my door to, that wants to take my car. And, like I don't have any of that. 21 years ago, I'm working corporate. My university degree is in education and mathematics. I'm working corporate. And we started to, we were, we, I was uh, working for like Cisco Systems, Microsoft, those kind of companies teaching the things that were building the internet at the time. And we had been through Y2K, which maybe some of our listeners don't even know what that was, but, but that's okay. You can Google it later. Right. But we had been through all of that. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, this, the Internet is going to change everything when it comes to how businesses interact with their prospects and their clients. The, the Internet. And it hadn't at that point. At that point, it was a gigantic business network. We oh, yeah, we had AOL and people were you got, you know, you got mail. They, people were doing that kind and, of stuff. And, and, and Netscape. Little, I remember Netscape. Yeah, right. And Alta Vista. Remember Alta Vista for mm. your search engine? Remember that? Oh, yeah. And I was, doctor, I was sitting there and I was like, this is going to change everything for businesses. And I went in, into the companies that I was working for and I was like, I, I think this is going to change everything. And they kind of, people kind of laughed at me because they couldn't, they didn't, they didn't see it. They couldn't see it. And I was working corporate and I could, I could see it. I could see everything that was going to happen. I went into a, I was living in New England, went into a Friday morning update meeting with my company. All of these people on my way there, sitting in sitting in Cambridge, Massachusetts traffic. I was like, I'm done. This is it. I'm going, I'm taking off. I went into the meeting and while we were sitting there, I was formatting my laptop, just erasing it. End of the meeting came, closed the laptop, pushed it over to the vice president who I reported to. And I said, I think today's my last day here. And at that time, it was, you didn't just leave, uh, you didn't leave these tech jobs. And I was like, I think today's my last day. It was Friday. I said goodbye to everyone. I left. I had my first client by Monday. So whatever that was, a couple of days later, however many hours that was. First client was Yankee Candle, which I'm sure people have heard of. Mm -hmm. And I that was 21, almost 22 years ago. And I've never looked back. And, and I, I've spent my time... At first, doing the work for companies, helping them leverage the internet to bring clients to them. Then I did it with them. And then I did it advisory, some of the biggest companies in the world advising them. And then uh, maybe 10 years ago, my wife said to me, you know, your degrees in education for every one person that you help, there are hundreds that would pay you to learn to do it themselves. And I was like, that's it. And so I built an online school. And I teach in this online school and entrepreneurs come to me to learn how to, 
how to grow their businesses. That was way longer a story than we needed to tell, but that's how it all happened. And that's where we are today. Yeah. So, so you've touched on this a little bit, but how would you describe the unique qualities of your business? So I think having a, having a background in education. So I went to university, got my degree in education, got my degree in mathematics, and I left university in 1991. And I taught calculus and physics at the high school level for a bunch of years. And I realized it, it's, it's this very mind expanding experience to work with young people who are interested in higher, in higher levels of things like calculus, like physics. And it was that education, being able to transfer knowledge from one brain to another is the key that unlocks anything. And so when I left teaching at the high school level and I, and I started to get into technology and started to work with these companies, every step of the way it was, how does education impact what we're doing right now? How does the transfer of information from one person's brain to another person's brain impact what's happening in this moment? And when you layer that into marketing a business online, because that's really what we're talking about here is getting, getting people who are interested in something to take an action. That's all, we're, that's all we're really talking about. The process of educating along every step of the way is the differentiator. And that's what's missing in so much of marketing nowadays and some in marketing so look we tiktok what, what's happening on tiktok i know you're you're a big tiktoker doctor i see you dancing around on tiktok i'm sure i can find that <laughs> no <laughs> me either but what's happening is people are going into these things they're just like they're pointing around in the air and they're dancing around and and it's funny it is funny and it's fun but to have an impact on the world, you're not doing it by doing a silly dance in public somewhere with people looking at you. You're doing it by educating people into the profound impact that they can have on their market. So the question that you asked was what's unique? What's unique is I have studied how to educate my entire life. It's all I, it's what I know best how to teach and how to transfer information from one brain to another. So when I built my online school, I built it specifically so that the transfer of knowledge from brain to, to my clients is effortless and, and flows and accounts for every type of learning style so that anyone who comes into my programs can then go out and have an impact on their market because clients come to them effortlessly. That's it. There, you, there it is. I don't know. Was that too many words? No, it, it, it's it's great. So so that's the process when you say organic client attraction. Why don't you say just a little bit more about how it's organic as opposed to some other method or inorganic, I guess, is the um, yeah. other method of client attraction. It's organic versus paid client attraction. You know, okay. Those are the two. And so, and, and so what happens is we all know as entrepreneurs that in order to get clients, so I think about this, unless you're, unless you're like a, a, a doctor that delivers babies, your clients already are born. They're already, they already are living on the face of the earth somewhere, right? Those are your, your clients are there and they have a problem. And I'm talking to the entrepreneurs out there. Your clients exist right now. 3 billion people on Facebook, almost a billion on LinkedIn, over a billion on Instagram alone. Right? That's more than half of the, the adult population. So your clients are there and they have a problem and you can solve that problem and they are seeking a solution to that problem. So what's missing in all of that is your solution being in front of these people and then layer on the education component of it where you're educating your potential client, your prospect, that you have the solution that's going to work for them. These are all puzzle pieces. Organic client attraction puts all of those things together in a way that doesn't require paying for ads or paying for lead generation or paying for a high price consultant that's trying to do it for you. So organic client attraction is the process of taking your solution and getting it in front of the person that is seeking that solution and revealing you as the sole source for the solution that they're seeking. And then just repeating that process over and over again. So, so what should someone do if, if they know they have a great service, but they, yeah. they're stuck because they're being ignored? 
They should every step of the way be looking to educate in that in that service. Talk about let's talk about what they shouldn't do first. Okay. What they shouldn't do is go online and spend all of their time talking about themselves. That's the flaw. That's the fatal flaw that causes so many entrepreneurs to fail. And if that's the first step, you it is the it is like an invitation to be poor. It is an invitation to fail as an entrepreneur to go and just always be showcasing yourself and your own abilities. It's showing the cars, the lifestyles, the homes, the the you know the just the everything. If all if everything is directed at you, there is nothing left to be directed at the prospect. So here's what we know from research, from data. 71% of consumers want to research and understand the solution before they purchase the solution. We see this across the board. We, we study all different industries and we see that about 71% of consumers are researching prior to making a buying decision. I think as we go into an economy where, where finances are getting a little more tight, research is going to become even more important. We're going to see that number go up to maybe even 75%. Yeah, I would agree with that. You spend your time talking about you and your car and your house and your vacation, and there's nothing left to educate the consumer into the solution that they're so desperately seeking. So what should someone do right now is make the shift and stop talking about themselves and only talk about the transformation that awaits your prospects when they decide to work with you. And that comes through educating every single step of the way. The problem that people have is, first, they have a hard time understanding how to educate, but it really just comes down to talk about what the solution looks like, give them some advice to help them get there, educate them, give them a small transformation prior to even considering a sale. And, and the sales process becomes so much easier. And then the other problem people have is, what if I teach too much and they don't need me? Rest assured, that will never happen. You, you, can, you could teach everything that you know and people are still going to pay you to help them because you've helped them prior to you even asking for a sale. Yeah, that reminds me of a, a story I heard about. Um, there was a guy who um, was at Home Depot doing the how to install the tiles yourself kind of workshop on Saturday mornings. Yeah. And out of the 10 people that came and watched, eight of them would hire him because they yeah. realized there was no freaking way they could do it themselves. Yeah, absolutely. But he would teach them everything, right? Yeah. So it's a similar kind of thing. Offer people help. Yeah. And they'll recognize there's a lot more there that, you know, behind what you're what you're what you're teaching them already. But and they'll see it, the value. Do it every single day. Every single day. Hit, hit the social platforms. And every single day, just offer that education. Give people micro transformations so that they're getting closer and closer to where they want to be. And they're going to realize that you are the one that's going to get them there faster. So, so what are the biggest frustrations that your prospects feel when they come to you for help? The biggest frustrations that they feel are overwhelm is the one that I hear the most because there are so many different social platforms. There are so many different people saying you should be doing X to get Y and X and Y are never the same. There is a minefield of misinformation about what you should be doing online. I, I work with large groups of people, companies where they've been told all they should be doing is talking about themselves and showing their lifestyles because it's the lifestyle that's going to sell. We're beyond that. That might have worked 10 years ago. We're beyond that now. And so that doesn't work anymore. So the frustrations are the overwhelm of having the, the what, what we call now the age of choice. We are living in the age of choice. We've moved beyond age of information. And now we're in the age of choice. And we have so much choice available to us that when you have that much choice and you start to feel overwhelmed, the natural inclination is to do nothing. And so that's where my that's where my prospects are. They come to me and they're like, I'm overwhelmed. Nothing seems to work. Everything that I've tried, and I've tried everything, I can't get beyond even the first step. I have people that come to me after spending tens of thousands of dollars on ads that haven't worked because that was the first thing they tried. 
and, it, and they just didn't know what to do. So this this overwhelm with the in the age of choice is what I'm working to unravel and find that right pathway for them. And then when you give people a, a, a strategic plan, a step by step that removes the overwhelm, that clears the chaos of client attraction, suddenly they can breathe and they're making measurable progress towards those goals. A great, a, a, one of my favorite examples, and I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to undermine privacy, the privacy of the people who are in my private mastermind, but I have someone in there who is, who is an attorney and they started their business in 2020 and came to me in November of 2020 with a very modest goal, wanting to make six figures, pay the bills. And we worked together. We organized simplicity in marketing for this, for this individual. And they now through, and I'm being very careful because I don't want to, I really don't want to give away, you know, too much about this person no, because of privacy, okay. but through 2021 and now halfway into 2022, their modest goal of six figures, just pay the bills is now a firm with employees that is breaking the seven figure mark and having a massive impact on a very specific target client that they're working with. And this is somebody who, who's just like, I just want to pay the bills. And now they have a firm and they have other lawyers coming to them saying, how did you do this? And how did you do it so rapidly? So we grew, we, we grew to, to seven figures rapidly. So it, it's just a great example of how when you clear the overwhelm, suddenly the chaos is, is gone and you're in a state of calm and client attraction just starts to happen very naturally. I feel like I'm talking too much, doctor. Help me out here. <laughs> um. So what, what do you, what do you see as, as changing as we've, you know, obviously you talked about this, this one uh, client who you know, really started with the pandemic. Yeah. Um, what, what do you, what do you see as, as changing as we, I don't want to say we're exiting the pandemic, but, but we're, 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 we're entering a new normal, I think is maybe the right yeah. way to say it. Um, what, what do you, what do you see as, as different? How do you, how do you see things um, evolving? Yeah. Before the pandemic, using social media was optional if, if people wanted to grow a business because there were so many other things that they could do. When the pandemic came through, we all were isolated. We all had to, uh, we all had to make our computers and our, our, our cameras and our microphones become our conduit to the world. And it turned social media into the level playing field that every entrepreneur has the ability to use to grow their business. And now it's no longer optional. If you're not using these channels, then you're far behind where your competition is. So now we're, now here we are on the other side of it. Uh, things are opening up. People can start to meet in person again, but what do we find? People are not changing from the habits they developed over the past few years, and they're still going to social media as a way of promoting their businesses. So we've developed an entirely new way of thinking, an entirely new ecosystem that uses the level playing field of social media and search and websites and all things online as a way of marketing our businesses. And it's a beautiful thing because it's giving opportunity and choice because we're now in the age of choice, is giving choice to these people who look at any of the headlines, go to the sidebar on LinkedIn and look at how many businesses are laying off. Well, if you've got a core competency and you can give someone a transformation, there's never been a better time to become an entrepreneur and start that business because the level playing field awaits and is there for you. So that's, the, I think that's the big change. The other big change, let me just say this, the other big change, and I want to see if you agree with me on this, doctor. The other big change is in isolation, right? Over the past couple of years, in isolation, in living in, a, and, and there's absolutely no need to get, to, to take a stand on anything political about this, but people, lived, people were living in fear for a, a good amount of time. And they were living, people were afraid to see family. They were afraid to see friends. They were being told, celebrate Thanksgiving on your own. You know, all of those things were happening. So there was a lot of fear happening, a lot of isolation. In isolation, we crave human, the human connection even more. Because 
of our, if we, and, and, and there are lots of different scientific reasons for this, but if you look at the brain and you look at the, uh, you look at the basal ganglia and the, and I don't really want to get too scientific here, but you look at the limbic system, the, the primal parts of the brain, they want us to collect. They want us to be together because that's what the, the, the pack keeps us alive. And when you're forced into isolation, you crave that even more. And so our ability to connect with our prospects on a human level has a more profound impact on our ability to convince them that we have the solutions that they're looking for. And how do we connect with them? We educate them and we teach them and we give them those small transformations. And that builds that connection that we are now craving more and more and more. Even if that connection happens this way yeah. or over social media, yeah. If you can, if you can craft your message to really connect, yeah. one of the things that we talk about in the program that that I'm coaching my clients on is is there's a conversation going on in the head of your prospects, and you want to interrupt that conversation, right? You want to you yeah. want to grab hold of that problem that they have that they don't want, and the result that they want that they don't have, and yeah. somehow connect that with your product or service you right. in, does, you you become part of that conversation it's just it's the it's the natural integration of you and your solution as a part of that conversation i think you're exactly right about that how do your how do how do the people that are in your mastermind and that in, that are in your service how do they respond when you present something like that to them well you know it's really interesting because um they've never really thought about it that way. And you're yeah. right. That, that you look at the website, a typical website is all about the business owner, right? It, it's, it's all about, now I've been in business for so many years and, and, you know, give me a call. I'll solve your problem without yeah. any indication that they even understand what the problem is. Uh, and, and that, that, you know, you've got 10 or 15 seconds with the eyeballs, but you've got to you've, you've got to make a, a an impact. What are, like what would the, what's the biggest tip that you would give someone to become a part of the conversation in the brain? I'll share mine with you in a minute, but I want to hear yours. Well, it's it's exactly that. It, it's it's understanding your ideal prospect, your ideal client. What is he or she thinking? What's the problem that they wake up in the middle of the night with that yeah. you can help solve? Right. And and so that that should be your headline. It shouldn't be about you. It should be about the transformation exactly that you right. that you provide to them. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And, and, and so that's that sort of and, and once my clients get that, it changes everything. I would totally agree. That, that that's like the game changer. What's like, what's the biggest change? Like, does that ease the process of them feeling comfortable about the content that they're creating or the way that they're positioning themselves? Well, certainly because yeah. it, it, all of the people that I work with, and I know all of the people that you work with, really the desire is to help. That's the reason that they're in business, yeah. right? They're not in business to make money, they're really in business to help others. And they found that this is a gift that they have that they can share with others. Yeah. And unless you connect, as you correctly point out, unless you connect with them on a human level, um, I was listening to a podcast the other day, you know, it, it doesn't matter where you're B2B or B2C, it's still H to H. It's human mm -hmm. to human. Yeah. What right. I often tell people is that your prospects have an end result that they're looking for that you can help get them to. And there is a reason that they want that end result. So we take a step back. What's the reason that they want that end result? But then that's where so many people stop considering is, well, why do they want this? What we must do is we must think about that end result and then examine the second order consequences of having that result. And the second order consequences are, what do they get once they have that result? What are the emotions that they feel? What are the life conditions that come into their world? How are they perceived by their clients, their community, their family? 
How do they perceive themselves? All of these are the second order consequences to getting that result. And when you can tap into those things, this is so much beyond your why, which is what so many people talk about is what's your why. So much beyond the why. This is your, this is the iron grip on the transformation that you offer is that when you can understand two things, I'll make two points. When you can understand the far second order consequences that are going to happen once they get that result then you're talking at a level that no one else can talk. Now, come back to an equal distance at the beginning and understand what are the limiting beliefs that they've been telling themselves that have been preventing them from getting the goal and the second order consequences. So you, you almost, you're taking that transformation, you're putting it here, second order consequences are here beyond it, but then the limiting beliefs are before it. And when you start to talk to a prospect about, you know, hey, I'm pretty sure you're feeling this way. Based on what we're talking about, I'm pretty sure you're feeling this way. And that's been preventing you from making progress towards that goal. But we both know when you break through that and get to that goal, you're also going to feel this way and people are going to see you this way and your clients are going to react this way. Now you're hitting, you're hitting every level of internal conversation in their head including the one that they never talk to their spouse about. They never talk to their confidant, their therapist, their whoever about. You're hitting a level that they only hear inside of here. And now that's when, that's when you are the one for them. That's magic. I think Thanks so too. For us. Yeah. So if somebody wants to uh, get in touch with you to explore this more, uh, what's the best way to do that? You know, it's it. We try to make it as easy as possible for the for the right people. And it's I, I have I don't know if I don't know if it's can I can I put my hands right here and and hold this? Can they see this? Yes, they can see that. I put it I put it right here for you. I'm holding it right here for you in this in this green um uh, this green yep. Proudy Proudy dot me Proudy dot me. That's my last name dot me. I always talk about you shouldn't talk about yourself, but I couldn't get Proudy dot com. I had to get Proudy dot me. It's easy to remember. <laughs> Proudy.me gets people to my calendar. Great. What's, Chris, wonderful how, how we, conversation. Like, what do we do now, doctor? What do we do now? <laughs> well, <laughs> how do we? You know, th this has been a wonderful conversation. Um, you know, I, I, I'd love to have you come back again at some yes. point in the future and we can talk some more. Oh, I, um, I listen. I have so much respect for you and what you do. I see the transformation that you give the people that you work with. Actually, let me ask you this question really quickly. If somebody wanted to get on your calendar and, and learn about the programs that you offer, how can they do that? And the, the, best, the best way is to go to profitminds.net. Yeah. So I my, really would my... encourage anyone watching this to do that right now. If they haven't been already, like who are the people watching this, doctor? Are they, they're... They could they could really benefit from going there, couldn't they? Yes, I, I think you know our clients, your clients, and my clients are very very similar. We we offer yeah. different perspectives on similar yeah. kinds of problems. So you're a very you're a very humble chap. I know this about you. You're very humble, and you're not you're not going to ask people to get on your calendar. So I'm going to ask for I'm going to ask them for you, and I'm going to say this: if you if you feel like you're stuck and you need someone who, who can tell you exactly what you should be doing and what you should be thinking to move forward. <laughs> He's over here. There he is. On my screen, he is at least. You gotta get with the, you gotta get with the doctor. So you go to profitminds.net and, and do get on his calendar. Thanks, Chris. And that concludes our show. And thanks to our guest, Chris Prouty. And thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. Stephen Kurtz, the professor of Protivity. You've been listening to the Profit Minds podcast. This is your host, Dr. Stephen Kirch. Please visit www.profitminds.net for other episodes or to contact me. Thank you for your positive feedback, comments, questions, and for sharing this show with others. Thanks for listening. Have a grateful day.